The bees via a composite task force, BIR plus CAT partners carried out an offensive operation from July 28 to August 1st. I mentioned August, August 2nd before, but from July the 28th through to August 1st, in the depths of the locality of Batibo in the Triangle of Enyo and Ewai, uh, the border area with the southwest, 15 terrorists neutralized. Now they are referring to our Ambazonia forces. They say 15 terrorists referring to these ADF fighters were killed. It said, it said 15 terrorists neutralized at least those, who, those whose bodies have been found. They mean those they have actually counted and they said they include one uh, Colonel Donut and then A2 mission commander reliability of intelligence i guess they are telling us uh they are trying to explain to us how this their mission was successful how it became very successful it says professional care about reliability of intelligence ladies and gentlemen let's note this this is important because here is where black leckism black leckism comes in La Republic says they were able to carry out this mission in Batibo successfully because of the reliability of intelligence. And then he also talks about the planning was good. And then the presence of guides. Again, this will have to do with black leckism. Black leckism. The presence in Batibo of guides, which means those who led them to the location and then good coordination they say was another factor say good coordination why driving that is why driving to the location where these fighters were located and the considerable losses inflicted on the terrorists they are referring to the adf fighters the amber fighters the considerable losses inflicted upon them at this locality in the dynamics of the previous one that means compared to previous damages will certainly break their momentum which means will certainly get the amber fighters maybe laying down their arms and walking away that is this keep on this keeps on happening again and again and again in that little community LGA of Batibo. We have lost some of the best of our fighters in Batibo again and again and again and again. And every time it happened, the ADF um, the ADF was involved directly involved. I mean directly, not even indirectly, but the ADF was directly involved. Uh, we remember the uh, the killings of our fighter General Bia Bia and uh, so many others who were killed in that community. Now today we are talking about 15, 15. And the worst of it, ladies and gentlemen, is that these 15 happen to be some of the best. Some of the best in Ambazonia. We are told they were coming from all over. Some were coming from Bui. Some were coming from uh, all the way from the southern zone. Some came from, uh, uh, I mean, all over the place. All over the place. Some were there from the BLM. That young man speaking there in glasses. In spectacles, he was there from the BLM. I am not sure whether he is among those killed or arrested or injured. We do not know. But all of them, all of them that you see here, we do not know their fate yet. We do not know their fate yet. But uh, again, it happened. And questions, questions, ladies and gentlemen, are being asked. Why? Why always? The ADF. 
But there is something a little intriguing here. I'd like to be very honest with all of you. We have always, we have a hard belief that the ADF has been fighting alongside the Republic du Cameroon uh, uh, military. So it is a, a kind of a little puzzling, puzzling that uh, French Cameroon soldiers will actually descend upon their own partners. I guess this is the case of dog eat dog, dog eat dog. In this case, something must have gone wrong. Now I am told that the same compound where these boys were picked up, ladies and gentlemen, the compound where they were picked up at the picture you see on your screen is the location where these boys were killed. Now I am told this is the very house in which Regina Mundi was, uh, was hiding, was kept. Now, I do not understand. Something doesn't make sense here. I have talked to hundreds of our fighters on the ground. Very few of them live in permanent structures. They don't live in permanent structures. But the ADF lives in permanent structures like this one. Regina Mundi was picked up from this one. You would think that those fighters would have changed, made a change of location, being that this one was already known. No, they did not move. They did not leave. They just continued business at this location as usual. And nothing happened to them. So that led the public to come around without we now descend on them, not just to pick them up, but kill 15 of them, pick so many of them, injure so many of them, living comf comfortably in that house, something, that, something is wrong. We need to understand something. There is something in the midst of this that we are not understanding. If we are to go with the picture that indeed the ADF has been fighting alongside La Republic du Cameroon, if that holds, then something must have gone wrong here which we are still to figure out. But I'd like to bring you something. I listened to an audio message that uh, 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 C. Court uh, Judson put out. I thought it was quite uh, interesting. The questions asked without answers were quite intriguing. And I'd like to bring you that uh, audio. I'd like you to stay put, listen to the audio, ladies and gentlemen, from uh, Seacott Judson. Listen to this audio. They didn't pass me with all this evil rhetoric, abusing up and down, backing up, up and down by the ADF guidance. Most of you should not quiet. Disciple get in restraint because these people who must provoke them from a sock. These boys for ground zero. They put their lives on the line. General Fang and all you boy them don't do the ultimate sacrifice for pay for many fighters paying with their lives. All they be need them is just good leadership, good orientation and direction. But due to poor coordination and wrong things them way that they instruct them for doam, this boy they meet up a Waterloo. Because inexperienced people like Capote Daniel be put in place like uh, uh, whether they call them deputy defense chief and doubling again as spokesman and doubling again as activists in don't know when for talk what and what not to say. Then now they come for defend themselves over a lockdown where they put them without the appropriate reasons. Because other stakeholders for the revolution say no. This, the point they want to talk them. You know, you know much, you know worker, you know cash water. We say no, we will not be approved the kind of lockdown. Whether we will get operation sun, uh, 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 sunshine on our rainfall, explain to the other stakeholders well. Then keep your intelligence well. You know do them. Your intelligence leak for the Republic. They can't keep by them. Now you know what can you defend yourself by, by, by ranting, abusing everybody, abusing my brother's scalp of man. How you going to pursue a revolution by making every other person who will not walk up your back like sheep, you make them our enemies. 
You go pay soon how? You are made love down. You, 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 you crush all man. Mad brother them. Not be so that they do. First, you say you want to call the spirit of the revolution. The spirit of the revolution, when it die as you talk them, you know they wake up the spirit by making a lockdown. You wake up the spirit by making a spe specific actions. Civilians don't collaborate with us for a long time. They've been disappointed with us because most of the boys, particularly the one for Batibo, where I come from, they're not the fight. On all sides, ATF and uh, uh, Restoration Forces, they're not the fight. If you want to make up the, the, the people, make them come back again, stop ransom, stop kidnap, stop all that in the way you make the people them immediately angry. Engage the community, engage in mobilizing them and apologizing to them. And stop fighting one another. And the people will get back the trust where the wrong ones give now. You say you want to recruit people again. You want to recruit at this time during lockdown. You want to recruit again people where you get forces from Basi. You get forces from Goda. You get forces from other areas. Uh, 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 opinion. Where they surround which side where you, you get them. You not support them. May they be strong. You not give them guns them. So that may they surround you and, and, and strengthen you. You say that you are recruit. Recruit people keep on the whole side. All camps, we get many camps the way they get about 25 people, 40 people with two guns, three guns, five guns. If you want, we don't need recruitment. We need armament. We need to give them more materials. Not be continued. You recruit, you recruit, we don't get guns, we we'll give them. You get oppression sometimes. You bring people all over. Then you can't keep the people for the same place where the Republic don't enter before. Lost sense. Eh? This one even means say they suppose so will be deputy defense chief or the defense chief or even Ayaba supposed to resign because Ayaba Rosho say he is very good in rhetoric but in implementation he is zero because regional Munji run for your hand. Now you bring people you are attacked, they die for your hand. You take people you want go last time for Bui for go carry material, they die for inside your hand. Allah will come, die for your hand. All them are massacres. You stand up for cause people for your weakness instead of resigning or instead of struggling to look where you elapse. Okay, make a point on them. Regina Mundi, when I, when I see the house where they burn them, they burn that house, that house now the headquarters of ATF. And when I already call them, say now our headquarters. And when you call some place in our headquarters, it becomes a target of the enemy, it becomes a specific target. Now you get headquarters, you get a uh, 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 your office. Now inside F your office for a Y, that be the way La Republic Bona now. Where Regina Mundi be the read for day. He read that speech where we not talk say when I run right of you me resign from parliament. After he read that speech, he did with that building. Suddenly he be moved to Ashong. When he be moved to Ashong, La Republic attack. When I can and go for Bush, La Republic came and attacked that same location. Then the free Munzi where others suspicious, suspicious circumstances. And then they visit all the other camp there, including that office. Everything they be done run. All man be run. Now they come. That one pass. How on earth? That same place where the Republic don't come visit them before. The Republic don't come for them. We can't reinstall it ourselves for them. We can't shoot them back for them. Shoot them make camps for them. We shoot them now. They don't come the second time. They can't meet up about eight boys every day. Most of them are boys they come from outside. They kill them. All right, ladies and gentlemen. How on earth? How on earth? Did the boys stay in the same camp in which they had been attacked before when they came for Regina Mundi? How come? They didn't move out of there. How come they were still there? Now, other things that Sikot brings up here, he talks about uh, no fighting taking place in Batibo. No fighting has been taking place in Batibo, ladies and gentlemen. But this Batibo continues to be a bury ground, a bury ground for some of our best fighters. He says, stop ransom taking and kidnappings and stop killing our own boys. He says, Ayaba is supposed to resign. 
I wish, I mean, these are not my own words, but uh, 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 Seacott Johnson's own word. And I, I understand at a point in time, I think, he has been uh, a member of a C. But I think that is a pragmatic approach to the issues, and these are the kind of people we need in this struggle to call things the way they should be called. Those boys who have died, those are somebody's children. Yesterday, it was Phil Masha. Today, it is these boys. We cannot continue to have our own die uh, in this way. Especially when we know the rule of black legs and enablers. You heard the report from uh, La Republic to Cameroon talking about good guidance, good guidance to the location where those boys were. Of course, I don't think there was anything new to them because they knew where they were. They have been there in the past. All right, I can't keep you any longer. I will bring in uh, Erico and uh, Uncle B to tell us what you know. I know Erico has been working on this story for quite a while since yesterday. Erico, please, it's great to have you, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, First, uh, I want to greet uh, the, my panelist, uh, Uncle B. I will be first of all start by greeting uh, our ARF, or uh, 21 Guns and uh, The issue in Batigo, uh Things the past of this have been calling naked cause and uh, calling uh, our ARF in Batibol. I succeeded uh, to speak with three of our ARF in Batibol because they are the main uh, people who can give me the real, the real information on what happened in Batibol, uh, precisely in Inu village and Iwa, Iwa village. Yes. Uh, but the story, their stories were not uh, accurate. But uh, finally, I got what I got. So the Abashian people, they're going to judge uh, for them. So, uh, one of the fighters, uh, which is a general, uh, our ARF, uh, he said, uh, what he, he knew is that uh, 11 of them, 11 of them was killed. 11 of uh, our guys, uh, the ADM guys, were killed in the in that mission. And then secondly, he said, uh, in that house, in, he said in the, in the house, uh, it was like they were preparing to do something and uh, uh, the informant informed the, uh, the military, the military came and surrounded the house and got some of them arrested and killed. And then he said, and then one of the fighters said, uh, in the evening, uh, some of the ADF guys, they took their AKs and they were shooting this in the air uh, from Inyo coming towards Ambu, from Inyo coming towards Ambu, and they were making noise, where they say, fuck you, fuck you. And then later on, they ceased, they, they ceased the fire, they went into their barracks. That's when, that's when the, military, the military came. And then he said, the military, the military men who came, uh, they were there, not the one from the... Uh, from Ambo, they came from Bameda and they went back on Monday. Uh, it, it was like a special mission. They came and they went back on, on, on Monday. So then the second the second fighter who said he just told me uh, he, he had gunshot from uh, Inyo going towards uh, Ambo, towards Iwa, and then later in the morning uh, he got a story that uh, some of the uh, ADF guys uh, we've been killed. So I asked, uh, was it a confrontation between uh, the ADF and uh, the military? Uh, he said, no. What he knew is that it was like those guys, they were still preparing something, but he, he didn't know what we were preparing. This. So the military the appeared without them preparing their, they call it uh, ginger or whatever. They were still like preparing something in the house. So um, I asked, uh, this issue happened in uh, in uh, Inyo and uh, Iwa because some of the fighters were killed in uh, Inyo and some killed in Iwa. The house we are seeing there, you, you are muted. Uh, thank you. I like us to take this a little surgically. Uh, this happened on July the 28th. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. Now. Uh, 
and the location was this same location where they kept Regina Mundi. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, what were they still doing at that location, knowing that the Republic of Cameroon had chased them out of there before? What, what have you found out? Yes, uh, Secretary Chris, uh, somebody told me and sent me an audio and said uh, what the Batibo people are trying to gather is that uh, it, was, it was like what happened to late General Ivo, they wanted to do it with effort. That's what they are trying to they are trying to gather. Uh, because uh, last week, Epan met in uh, Guzan and uh, there was uh, some confrontation with the military with uh, I think Grandpa of Bali. So it was like uh, they said Epan has been uh, talking to the people that they are abusing that he's not more fighting, so he want to go himself. So it was like the ATF they are not happy of the, uh, the, the, the action the, the Epan want to take. It was just like the ATF, they are not happy of the action everyone wants to take. So, um, I think... Oh, that hold on there, hold on there. The, the ADF was not happy with the action that Evan wanted to take. Is that what uh, yes, gathered those yes. people together? Yes, that's what I... I and what was, supposed to be this, what was supposed to be this mission that Evan was supposed to take? Yes, uh, you, you, uh, Epan and uh, uh, Grandpa of Bali, Epan met with Grandpa of Bali and they were complaining and Epan said, uh, people have been complaining, you are not fighting anymore, you are kidnapping this, so you want to do the same to the people that now are fighting with uh, Grandpa of Bali. So, uh, last week they were in, in Buzan and they were shooting uh, between the, the, the uh, Grandpa Epan with the military. Suddenly, oh, just two days ago, this incident happened. It was like they wanted to trap Epan. According to the story we are trying to get, it was like they were, they were trying to uh, trap Epan like how they did with, uh, with Ivo. So that uh, Epan escaped the, the trap. So we are still trying to gather the story uh, uh, of that side. But what happened uh, in that incident was there was no confrontation between uh, the, the military and the, the, the ADF. What happened is that when the military came, and the boys realized that the military were dead. They self-defense. What happened was self-defense. So that's what happened. It was not like uh, a prepared confrontation between the ATF and the, uh, the military. What happened was just a self-defense. They noticed the military were already around. So they don't have any option that to start shooting and self-defense. That's what happened. Now, the ADF has said that this meeting in Batibo was meant to plan for an operation, quote unquote, that will take over some city. Uh, what do you know about that? Yeah, uh, Senator Chris, what I, what I knew about the, the, the meeting uh, of the ADF first, the ADF, I learned that we were trying to uh, the, the, the planification of the lockdown. Secondly, they were planning to go to the BLM. That's, that's, that's the, the, the mission I, I gathered. They were, they were rallying all the fighters, they wanted to bring all the fighters together, and then uh, you will see an audio or a, a video to, to enforce the lockdown. And then secondly, you will see them in the BLM, going to the BLM to install ATM in the BLM. That's what, that's what um, I gathered. Thank you for uh, uh, mentioning that. Now you have only confirmed what I have heard from other sources. Now if you look at this footage, this guy in the middle is called General Pride. He was the assistant to Ayeke. And if we, sh let, uh, let's play the, the audio in that footage, let people hear, let people hear uh, what they are saying. Uh, when I meet in our bride, I will send this message all over Ambazunia. The BLM people them. Both home and abroad. I want to you when I say in my absence, no matter how the sea come. And as I enter ground, all this code when I see I'm like this. At the enter ground with them. So, we will liberate from place to places. We will liberate 
Ambazonia from place to place. We follow all over Ambazonia. Okay, we will go my place, no be so, they say not so, and my place there refers to the BLM, and we have been told, we got this video about, I think about uh, two weeks ago, and it was made on, uh, on, the, on the 14th, according to the audio message there, it was made on the 14th, that is two days after the death of uh, Phil Masha, and we also heard announcements coming from uh, Chairman Ayaba himself talking about going over to the BLM. So you have confirmed, uh, Eriko, what I learned that uh, one of the agenda of this meeting in Batibu was to plan the takeover of uh, the BLM. Uh, but let me go to uh, Uncle B. Uncle B, some of the best of our fighters have died in this attack in the Batibo. And but there is one phenomenon here. Every time the ADF gathers fighters in this number, they are killed. Boy, 39, or was it 32 or 39, they are still very much uh, in our minds. And then we have this one. There are other ones at Lona Alabo come and so on. The ADF is gathering some of the best fighters on the ground and they are essentially being killed by the Arab to Cameroon without a single battle. Without a single battle against the Arab Republic to Cameroon. Where are we going? Where is the ADF going to attribute what has just happened in Batibo? Uncle Bill. Muted. You're on. Go on. Go on. Go on, please. Uncle B, okay. Go on. Your volume is very low. I don't know what is going on. We cannot. I cannot hear you, Uncle B. Enrico, can you hear him? No. No. Uncle B, I think you are muted or is what? It okay now? Yeah, well, are you yeah. okay now? All right, we can hear you now. Go on. Yes, I think I was muted. Um, I was just saying that uh, before coming onto this program, I listened to an audio from uh, a certain, I think, Ashu. They were saying that a large mob from Libya, they were talking that Fimasha was killed, nothing happened, but they went to to Batibu and the guy fought and fought and fought. I think we were talking about three days. And then finally, and you have the audacity to come to TV to start from the lie that you're doing all along. In a nutshell, he was not wanting you to take the program to to a to to to, to ABS to tell the for what happened. But look at this secretary. I mean, I don't know for us to be talking about this things every day, every day. It, I mean, it is happening. It is happening. We've never had any other kind of what has happened here happening in Bazoria. And we say your relationship with our people and you guys is what determines you, whether you are frontline or defense. If they were planning to move to Libya as ADF, does that surprise you what that they be trying to get to Libya even when the king was here alive and did not succeed? I remember there was a time the stage a fire, so I was calling the king to come up for backup. Meanwhile, there was no fight taking place, but they asked him to come for a backup, but there was no fighting taking place. You know that if you call somebody to come back away, you are not fighting. There will be a reason why you are calling that person to come for a back away, you are not fighting. And finally left and there was no backup. So what I'm trying to say here is I cannot imagine the 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 dynamics really is how that is happening between ATF and the military. Remember before even when a commando went out they said he drove that out of town. I think they were staying in a sort of a three story building around the central town. And the military is around there. Now, this is another house where we were saying, and you are lamenting, they were staying in, in a plain view of everybody. And nobody at the, at the, the military or that they were done with, no problem. But the one thing that is peculiar here, the military is describing as a ref from that, that thing. 
I think I read that Afan was wounded on the right hand. How did they know all these guys that they left from here, this one from here, this one from here, this one from here, to name them? If they went there as a surprise, then the black leggings were so advanced in order they had to identify where the voice came from. What is not that you know who was wounded, who was yeah, not wounded. That is quite from... that is quite intriguing, uh, Uncle B, that they can actually pinpoint where yes. each of the fighters killed came from. And with their names, the names and their level and everything spelled out they came from here. How did they know that? Right. That right. these boys came from those places and only to be killed in that place. The problem is if I can understand one thing. If the boy were saying that they're going to fight all over the country to liberate Ambazonia, it may be as uh, my colleague um, or my panelist uh, Eric is saying, it was like they wanted to get something here of it or something trying to do something that they didn't like they want to get rid of him. I want to bet these boys are just simply being misguided. Because if they are saying that they are going to fight all over Ambazona to liberate their own land, and if they are taking the doctrine of Ayeba, Ayeba is highly fought. So how would they be saying that they fought all the place or the whole place to liberate their own land? It will mean that they are always being they are ready to fight, but something is holding them back and they are being misled to wage the real fight that's supposed to wage in defending Ambazonia. And that's where most of what they better somewhere at their key as they just did. So I want to say that these boys are ready to fight, but the, the doctrine that is being given to them is me guiding them and making them do what they've been doing. How will you explain on earth that you kill? I mean, Madame Mundi was in that building. Yeah. And it's gone. And you see, it remain in that building. And it remain in that building. It remain in the same building. Is that not funny? So there's uh, something, that, something that is not going wrong, is not going right here. I can't be able to say what is not going right here. As you say, something is not adding up. And uh, I think I can't lay hand on what is not adding up. But for the military to know all details, those who were wounded, those who were slightly wounded, their names, came, the one came from here, it's puzzling for me to know how they got into that information. Thank you. Well, well, thank you. We are joined by uh, uh, Chairman Jackson. Uh, Chairman Jackson is from the same neck of the wood. Uh, Chairman Jackson, if you can centralize your image there, please. Uh, wonderful. Great. And uh, that is great. Please tell us what you know. Thank you for joining the set. Tell us what you know. You are coming from uh, the same county and you have been also trying to do some investig investigation. What have you learned led to these killings? We're them and making them do what they've been doing. Uh, uh. Chairman Jackson. Uh, can I speak now? Yes, sir. Go on. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, Secretary Chris, first of all, the events leading to this tragedy is, is very, very, very confusing. And uh, starting with the justification for a lockdown, and a lockdown that was meant to uh, punish our people, a lockdown that was not justified. And everything after that lockdown is very, very confusing. Uh, as uh, Comrade Eric... Uh, if, uh, if I may stop you a little bit there, uh, are you saying that that gathering had anything to do with the uh, so-called lockdown they announced? Well, there are conflicting reports that um, they were gathering there to put a squad to go uh, to reinforce the lockdown. Remember, there was, a, okay. there was a serious pushback. There was a serious pushback. Correct. And another school of thought is what uh, uh, Comrade Eric just said, uh, Kaba. Uh, but the truth is that uh, boys left from various destinations and were assembled in, in, in a location that was not strange, a location that was not foreign. To, to, to the Gulf to La Republic. So, and they have to come out because I, I hear, I listened to a couple of audios today from uh, Capo Daniel who was trying to, said he was de trying to declassify um, the mission. To me, it's a cover up because you are trying to declassify a mission that failed, which means that you don't even intend to pursue that mission uh, in future. Uh, and he was trying to me. It was justification for for the heinous act that uh, of course this young man. So uh, being there and 
having boys come from all over and they get slaughtered like that. Um, we, we might speculate here, but the truth is that uh, the power that be made very terrible decisions to, to, got, uh, to got these boys to where they are today. Now, uh, the same question I asked Uncle B, uh, some of the best of our fighters have died in that uh, adven adventure and uh, it's going to take a long time to recover uh, the caliber of those fighters you heard or you came a little bit late, you didn't hear what uh, their commander said. You read that statement from them. They said, this action will quell the momentum of those who are left from fighting. What do you think about that statement? Well, um, it is a little bit controversial uh, to say that they were the best because if they were the best, we often seen where they, were, they, were, they, where they have been fighting to be the best. Uh, but the truth is that it was the cream of uh, fighters that were selected from all over. and. And, and if the military is coming down with the assertion that they is going to kill the momentum, I don't know where they're coming from with that. But we understand that based on the materials that were recovered, I think uh, these guys were heavily armed. But for the fact that they have all these uh, heavy, um, sophisticated materials, but uh, apparently we haven't heard so much about them. Uh, raise the question like what some of your panelists said, what is going on? Because this, um, this is, this is uh, what we call a deja, deja vu. Uh, this same as one of your panelists said, they selected a cream of their best in court yeah. and, and sent to Bui and we know what happened. And they have selected some of these guys and brought to Momo and we'll see what has happened. And this is happening over and over. And again, you see big number, he continued to be the survivor in all these activities. Now, that is, that is, that is quite interesting because <laughs> the man, big number, <laughs> survives every one of these attacks. Maybe he is a really big number indeed, uh, isn't he? He survives <laughs> every one of them, be it uh, Pumbo or, or Bui, he survived, be it this one, he survived, he, I think he survived some other ones too. Is it not uh, just logical to say this guy could be an insider? Um, your guess is just as good as mine and that is why everybody is scratching their head. From the so many people that we speak to, everybody is scratching their head and they're, they're asking why? Why is this happening? We are seeing this. This is, a, this is the same story that keeps repeating itself. What's going on? And and uh, uh, coming to the fighting spirit, this is somebody that has um, uh, the audio you play from Sikot. I mean, he, he kind of analyzed almost every important thing that needed to be said. Uh, it's so critical. Um, but uh, I'm not going to go that far because he already said so much. But if you look at the reason why this guy should assemble in the same spot where other things have happened and you ask yourself, what was the reason for doing that? And as Secretary Chris, I know people want collaboration. We really want to come together. But under such circumstances, there is so much fear in the air uh, with, when you have developments like this. Well, uh Another, another question, though, that I will uh, put to you, and I would like to put this to the rest of uh, the panel. The problem of blacklegs and enablers. Let's assume that uh, this was not an insider uh, uh, leak. It was a blacklegism uh, 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 target. What should the, SD, the ADF be thinking now about those uh, black legs? Okay, um, there is a natural phenomenon that is, you're not going to hear from me that ADF is so involved in kidnappings and torturing of 
uh, are the civilians. It is just a natural phenomenon that if I get maltreated, I have to look for a way to revenge. Uh, people get angry and they should understand that their first line of defense is the, is the, the civilians. And right. we, we are aware of some of the atrocities that they have done in, uh, in Mogamo. They, they, they even went as far as um, replacing the chief of a certain village over there. They took over the, the whole village. And uh, from the story we hear, uh, the people there, they don't have any say. So when you, when you breach your first line of defense, then you expect to have this black leg. I'm not in a way giving justification for black legs, but they are making it easy for people to make, to do some of these things. But the issue of black leg is a very important issue in, in this quest for uh, for the liberation of Amazonia. And it's something that if the parties concerned come together, they can easily handle that. But when, when everybody's drifting towards different directions, then it gives the it gives the, the persons that want to betray the opportunity to do their dirty job, which is what they're doing good now. So it is incumbent for everybody to come together and think as one and execute as one. That is the best way to do it. At that time the blacklist will be helpless. All right. Let me get back to Erico and ask you this uh very uh, critical question and I will send it to, uh, I will make, I will get it, make the rounds to the three of you. Uh, you all, you know, we are in the habit of saying the SDF is fighting along, uh, sorry, the ADF is fighting alongside La Republique du Cameroon. But when La Republique du Cameroon comes around and kill this number of fighters, belonging to the ADF. What should we say? Erico. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chris. Uh, before answering the, that question, uh, let me talk about this uh, black leg uh, stuff. Yes, I'm from, I'm from Batfoot, and uh, I can guarantee you, Mr. Chris, uh, we, we don't have a, a lot of black leg like the, the other LGAs uh, in Amazonia. What happened? What what is happening in Batavia is that uh, these guys, uh, FM, has been causing a lot, a lot of atrocities in that uh, community. For example, the Inyo, the Inyo, we are talking. The Inyo, they had a car in Inyo, but the fall of Inyo is not in Inyo because of FM. And then what do you think about the subjects? So and then you go to the uh, Iwa, the Iwa, if we, if we, if we, if we if the person dies, if they want to bury, you give one million to EPA. Okay, recently, recently, uh, uh, the second commander of EPA was arrested in Yaoundé, in millions, with a passport wow. in a hotel. The second commander, from a guy okay. from India, the second commander of EPA was being arrested in Yaoundé. Okay. With, with a passport, trying to, to escape. Somebody alleged the, 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 the the police in Yaoundé, they went to the hotel and arrested the guy with 16 million. Where is that 16 million from? Because I can assure you and guarantee you that if the if, if effort is being caught right handed, the, the amount of money in his pocket, you will, you will be shocked. And where is that money coming from? From the people of Batu. From the, from the people of Batu. So, what do you expect? Every day is complaining here and there, every day is complaining about everyone, 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 everyone. So, to me, we don't have black legs in uh, that book, but everyone has made the community go against everyone. What about the, the ARF? They don't complain about the, our ARF. It's only everyone, everyone. So, what do you expect? Okay, so I mean, let me come to the question. Uh, one of the fighters told me the new general. They just said it. They, they think uh, the accord by uh, John Hart with the other uh, general or general, Valerie and the other people, I think this, this new general has come with a new mission. And maybe I was told you to renew the, 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 the mission because the, the, the military men who came, who came right away from Bameda, 
and they were military men Ambo. So you, you imagine, Ambo is not far from Inyo. And then somebody leaving Bamida by Park Valley. And I enter back to go down, then Ambo, and then to Inyo. Which means, this, the, which means this may be a, 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 a secret or information secret that maybe those, those military guys in Ambo or they are working with ADF or the yes. That's why they have to bypass all the other villages and go right into the uh, UR and uh, EU to attack those guys. So those are some of the information we are going to invest. Uh, what we are just reading now, I will want to even even that stage because the rate at which uh, they are going, I'm afraid. I'm afraid because ATF is not doing any good in this situation. They are not fighting anywhere. But you see them with a lot of sophisticated material. Where are they fighting? So, uh, to me, it's just that uh, I will say La Republic has helped the, 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 the bad people to reduce the rate of kidnapping and ransom taking. To me. Uncle B. Is the ADF fighting uh, for La Republic or for uh, Ambazonia? And if they are fighting for La Republic, why would La Republic uh, kill this number of their fighters? I think. Oi. Go on. You can go hear on, me. Go on. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, when they went to we remember with Chacha with the decay Chacha. You did show to us a picture of a guy that was a bee that was embedded within the ADF. I can still remember, I think the name was something. Right, I remember that. Thinking. I recall yes. that. But if you see the ADF went to battle mix with Larry de Camero, what did you do? What do you do from there? It's about obvious that I think, right? A team cannot play anything that, an opposite team cannot play anything that is ready me. So mm -hmm. there's all reason to think that, to think that. Okay, when they went to boy. When they gathered it, boy, from the Momo, the Momo to Tanka, I went out there, and then before that, 39 situations happened. What was it? So I'm not here to say that there was a decrease. The SDF is a mystery to this revolution. And all that they do point to the fact that they are partners with. Sometimes alliance, sometimes alliance can go bad. And when it goes bad, you see the repercussion. There was a guy, let me give you a story. There's a guy in Tanka who was um, the, the, the commander in Tanka, who are half people in Tanka. There was a commander in there who killed, remember the, uh, the police, that the, uh, the army that they killed, cut the head, or they right. cut the head put on the tree somewhere. The problem was that the commander that was in that car left went somewhere. And then when he left somewhere, the second in command led that attack and they, they had to cut that guy, kill that guy, cut his leg. So when they beat the man in command, there was a quarrel between them a lot of and the military. Then why did you guys do this? Then the man's complaint was that he was not around, it is the second in command. That is the story from Tanka. It's the second in command that carried that action. It was not him, because he was not around. So when you hear story coming back, and the day the king was killed, said there was rejuvenation in that tanker. People did not know what happened. It's in the moment that the yes, king, the king died, but the ADF people in Tanta were in uh, that place, uh, Tanka, were celebrating overnight. Truly, God are celebrating. So, when we need one of us in the, in the life of the king, and then he dies as some other people were supposed to be fighting for are celebrating, what did he say? What did he conclude from that? There yeah, they were enemies, right? And I gave you a situation where they were going to Libya Lem and they're calling the king to come and give back, or where they actually no fight going on. So, mm -hmm. all of these things have made us to always. Believe, and without that, that example from the Buddhist thing, that they are completely partnered. Somebody cannot be looking for you in that center of Bajibu. That's where you are living. And they can't, they can't come after you. And then they wait on you till your best come from all over into that place. That's where they come after you. Something went bad somewhere that we cannot lay our hands. And that's what I'm saying that when you have an alliance with somebody, see, it's a new man that's come. Maybe he will not bring and did not buy into a line that would be between these two people. 